Hey everybody, this is Erica Sabo. Welcome back. So today I'm going to be doing a review for a game that has been on my mind for years. It's also one that came out quite a few months ago now, however I only just recently beat it and I needed to take some time to really figure out how I wanted to articulate my feelings about it. There's a lot to say about this game, there was a lot of controversy that followed it, and there's also a lot of beauty to it as well. And that game is Team Ego's The Last Guardian. Years in development, The Last Guardian is a game many of us were anxiously waiting for, maybe even doubting. Considering the game was stuck in development for over nine years, I guess I'm not really surprised by the varied reception, but it's still extremely relieving to know The Last Guardian is now a reality. So the question is, was the wait worth it? And how does this game stack up amongst Team Eco's other games, Eco and Shadow of the Colossus, as well as the PS4's rivaling new releases? In my opinion, yes. As a longtime fan of the series, and with consideration towards the development team, because making video games can be long and arduous despite what many might think, it was worth the wait, and still proves itself to be a strong, albeit flawed, contender in today's market. Of course, the more we dissect the intricacies of The Last Guardian, the more problems there are. But it's interesting how Team Eco has a way of building emotional attachment despite having some very unbalanced features. If I were to compare The Last Guardian to either Eco or Shadow, I would probably place it closer to Eco, both for the style of puzzle exploration, as well as, unfortunately, the frustrating combat and controls. If you've never played Eco, it was the developer's highly ambitious debut on the PS2, originally geared for the PS1. While I love the concept of this game, I'd be lying if I said the combat wasn't frustrating, especially when protecting protagonist Yorda from the shadow creatures pursuing her. Luckily, with The Last Guardian, we have a bit more power on our side thanks to our companion Trico, a mischievous, temperamental, but ultimately loyal beast that accompanies our protagonist, a young boy, during our journey. While having Trico follow orders is at times frustrating, I'm not surprised considering we're dealing with a wild creature that slowly builds bonds. I personally feel that navigating the boy is one of the most frustrating parts about all of this, especially because his controls are extremely erratic, they're very slippery, and it always causes the most problems when you're in the middle of combat and you're trying to get away from the magic knights that are pursuing you during your journey. Now at the same time, that motion blur and wait is something that's very pleasant, especially during the more calm moments, and that's that's kind of the rivaling force there. There's a bit of a 50-50 going on. That weight offers a sense of realism that is so akin to Team Eco's games. Oftentimes, Trico would be the one saving you, but considering its sheer size amidst the varied fortresses, it's up to the boy to help Trico navigate, explore, and save you from those evil doers. The Last Guardian's next biggest culprit is its camera, which does not work in favor of Trico's size. Even the most vast fortresses quickly feel extremely claustrophobic when you're meandering hallways and your camera is stuck in on awkward spots you just can't get out of. Considering how you need to be aware of your surroundings to navigate, it wasn't really a problem that you could just look past. However, despite the gameplay issues, I just can't help but get shivers down my spine just thinking of The Last Guardian's simple yet powerful story. As mentioned, Team Eco understands emotional intricacies very well and how time can build such strong, often heartbreaking, bonds. Another avenue worth discussing is The Last Guardian's graphics, which do not come without imperfections, but are also extremely breathtaking. Now what's so strange about the graphics is honestly how sloppy it can sometimes be. Team Eco knew where players would put their attention into, Trico for one. Its plumage, both in graphics and animation, is gorgeous, but the team also neglected the finer details, whether we're talking the blades of blowing grass or stone structures in each sprawling fortress. It's like the team used a mix of both PS3 and PS4 graphics and graphical techniques to bring the project to life, which isn't really a surprise considering this was originally supposed to be a PS3 game, but Frankensteining two graphical levels into one current gen game seems a little odd. Are you noticing a pattern here? There's a, there's a reason why The Last Guardian is closer to Eco than it is Shadow. These are both games that were built for systems they weren't actually destined for. 
I can't even imagine what the development must have been like knowing that the sheer ambition of a project would far surpass the console it's being built for. But that doesn't mean Team Eco shouldn't be taking responsibility at those roadblocks. I truly feel that despite The Last Guardian's flaws, the team behind it worked very hard to create a game that met the overall vision, and that while the finer details were oftentimes looked past, they ultimately did not take away from the emotional weight of the story and relationship that built. It's very easy, sometimes too easy, to nitpick about The Last Guardian's shortcomings, but I will not deny the emotions this game so viciously stirred inside of me. These feelings far surpass the erratic controls, the unintuitive camera, the blade of grass. In the end, none of that really mattered to me. I didn't want The Last Guardian to end, and as those credits rolled, I was left yearning for the closure I wanted. The attachment I built in my heart for this game. Not simply because of that long nine-year wait, but because of the timeless, bittersweet bond between a boy and a beast. So I hope you enjoyed my review of this very lovely game. Sure, of course, it has its flaws, but there is also so much to truly love about it. And I think sometimes what makes an experience that much better is when you can look past the flaws and find the beauty within all of it, because you can't have that perfect experience. It's near to impossible to have the experience that you dream of in your mind. The experience that all of us seem to always want to dream of in our minds when we think of a Team Eco game. I really love this one, and this is going to be one that stays in my collection for a very long time, one that will stick with me for a very long time, just like the others. So please leave your comments below. Please, no spoilers. Let's make sure that everybody gets to experience this game to the fullest, but I would also love to hear what you were able to take away from the experience too. Of course, your likes, your subscriptions, all mean the world to me and really help me continue this channel and continue doing what I love most. It's always such a pleasure having you all here, so please tune in again very soon for lots more videos, okay? Alright, peace.